we can keep talking about oh we need to see more funding goes to africans or underrepresented founders but also we minorities right like I live in the U.S., but I could categorize myself as many things, right? I could say I'm an immigrant, I'm a woman, and I'm black, and, you know, I have an accent, and I have all these different things that are against me. But every single time, I always tell myself that um, if I have to look at the negativity um, that is brought onto us, I'll never do anything, because I'll be like, why even try? I, can, I probably wouldn't be able to raise money. But if I said, oh... Africans can get funding. How about I make that change? I will go out and I'll raise money and I'll invest in these African founders. We can keep trying to like have a seat at the table, right? We need to get to a stage where we are all saying we are going to make our own tables and we are going to create them. Why Africa? I think um, there's a huge opportunity with Africa being the last frontier. I think we have seen over the last, I'll say 10 to 20 years, right, the evolution of the internet and then digitalization in the US, right? And some of the impact that that has done. I mean, when you think of some of the biggest companies, the biggest job creation companies, we're not thinking about the manufacturing guys, right? We're not thinking about the, the, the industrial revolution. Now, if you look, it's the Amazon. The Googles, the Facebooks, right? Um, Microsoft, those are the ones really creating a lot of jobs, right? That are well paying jobs, six figures jobs in the US. Um, we've seen that evolution in the US. We've seen it in Europe, right? We've seen that in China. Very recently, we've seen that in Latin and India. And I think Africa is just getting started. Hey everyone, this is Prashant and I'll be your host for the We See 10 x podcast. And today we have Eunice Ajim with us. Eunice is the founding partner at Ajim Capital, an early stage fund that invests in pre-seed and seed stage companies that focus on using technology to fill significant economic and infrastructure gaps for consumers and enterprises across sub-Saharan Africa. In this episode, we talk about the African startup ecosystem, why Africa is a great place to invest, most exciting sectors in Africa, portfolio companies doing great work, how we can increase diversity and inclusion in venture capital and a lot more. Without wasting any time, let's dive straight in. Oh wait, if you haven't subscribed to VC 10 x yet, please do and give us a 5 star rating if you find value in this episode. Now, let's start. Hey Eunice, so good to have you on the podcast. How are you doing? What about you? I'm doing great as well. And I'm uh, honored to have you as guest on the podcast. And I'm so excited to ask you all the questions I've prepared to start things off. Uh, what's been your story like and uh, how you started investing? Yeah, I'm going to give my two, eleva two minutes elevator pitch um, on how I became an investor. Um, so I'm originally from Cameroon out of Central Africa. Um, been in the U.S. for the last 10 and a half years, came here as an international student. And I think right after college, given my immigration status, you had to get a regular job. But I always like to say I'm an entrepreneur at heart. I grew up with an entrepreneurial dad. Um, so I always knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur, even though I did um, mathematics and statistics and finance um, in college. So right after graduation, um, got my first job at Apple. At first, it was like the, the grim job, right? I was like, oh, my God, like, I love the company. Like, everything was great. But then I slowly realized that it was not for me. I'm not just one of the people that enjoyed being in corporate America. Um, so after I realized, I was, okay, like, I need to start a business. I can't just be sitting here. You know, I can't become a multimillionaire being a regular employee. Um, and I remember at the time, um, data science and machine learning and AI was sexy. Right. It was the thing that everybody was talking about. I was a little bit in the industry. So I decided, OK, like, what if um, I build a company very similar to the Ubers and the Airbnbs, um, but for the data science community? Um, very soon when I had built it, um, started working towards growing my startup um, about a year and a half into it. 
I was struggling. I was like, I thought I was going to like become an entrepreneur, be a multimillionaire. It did not happen. I actually became homeless, carless, socialist. So many things got, went wrong. Um, and I struggled to fundraise. Um, but eventually I just met, you know, like one investor that really believed in what I was doing. We started having conversations. We were building something similar, but just different industries. So I ended up closing my first company, join him into the second one. The second company eventually is like when you work with somebody that actually understands how the game is being played, it is a different ball game. Our second company, uh, within two years, we raised um, a little bit over two point um, three point nine million um, in two rounds of funding. Grew the company to like multi million dollar uh, um, ARR. And as we were growing, me being African, I'm always like, how do I bring Africa in everything that I do? And I remember in early 2020 when, you know, the pandemic was happening, there was a crazy market for, for, for software engineers around the world. I convinced my team um, to hire out of the African continent. And they were like, okay, you need, if you think we can find great developers in Africa, you go for it. So from searching those African talents to like, you know, onboarding them like with payroll and, and um, you know, like paying them at the end of the month, it was just like too many hustle. Um, and I started asking myself, there must be solutions out there where I can um, either find startups, right, or softwares that can fix my problem. And some of the problems was just, is there a platform out there where I can just go and hire specifically African talent, right? I found it. And then I was like, is there a place where I can easily make payments for my employees to get paid easily at the end of the month? In the beginning, it was very difficult. It's like I had to go to the bank and, you know, make the, the, make the deposit. I would take like five to 10 business days for them to get the, the salary. Not a good experience. Anyway. The more I search and the more I dig into like finding solutions um, that were solutions for African problems, I was like, oh my gosh, there's a big, big market, right? The African startup is booming. But for people like myself in the US um, that are Africans, we were not aware of what was happening on the continent. And I think that was really my starting point to like, oh my gosh, like what is happening on the continent? How can I help? It was never how can I invest? Or how can I become an investor? It was just like, hey, how can I help these companies be successful? I've learned quite a little bit building my own company in the U.S. Let me see if I can give back. Started joining several syndicate groups, angel groups, and um, eventually realized that there was a huge opportunity. One of the biggest challenges I heard from entrepreneurs on the continent was the fact that um, access to capital was very limited. And it wasn't just complaints, right? It was the fact right? Like, um, there's a very, very small percentage of capital that goes to the whole continent of Africa from VC funding. And I wanted to be one of the people who changed that. So that's how I ended up launching Ajim Capital, um, an early stage pre-seed and seed um, VC fund that only focus on investing in companies out of sub-Saharan Africa. Yeah, that's I know very I said two minutes each. I don't know how long it took me to like <laughs> get that out. <laughs> That, that, that was good. That was good. Uh, no matter the time, right? So, yeah, that's very interesting what you're doing. And that is a very uh, important and critical pain point that you just mentioned, that uh, the funding that is going, uh, like majority of the VC funds are in the U.S., but the investment that's flowing from there is not flowing to black founders or uh, underrepresented founders uh, in general, women founders, right, and POC. Uh, and uh, since you started a GM Capital and raised a $10 million fund, uh, which is very much required uh, for funding specifically the African founders, right? So uh, uh, let's let's start with talking about the journey of raising a $10 million, $10 million fund focused on Africa. Uh, were there any problems involved in that process? Uh, what are the hurdles you encountered? And just uh, about the gen journey in general. Yeah, I mean, I think... Um... I really started the process, I would say, early in 2022 slash late last year. Um, I think when I decided to leave uh, my last company, I was like, okay, um, how in the world do I launch a VC fund, right? There's really not a lot of information on the internet on how to launch a VC fund. 
So I went very easily. I started very basic, like Google, like, hey, Google, how do I launch a VC fund? I found a few, like, very limited resources. Um, from those resources, I did a lot of research. And then what I started doing was, and, and I'm, and, 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 and Prashan, I'm going very basic, um, for the audience, because this is a question that I get so many times. Um, and then the next thing that I did was, hey, I'm going to look at every single emerging manager that I've heard of in the last one to two years, right? Because these people, they're not 10 years or 20 years ahead of, you know, ahead of me. They're only like one or two years. And if I can follow their steps, right, see how, what they've been doing and then add my little, you know, say what to it, right? It, it, it will help me hopefully get to the next level. So, and that's when I started looking at, um, a lot of emerging managers. I mean, the Janine from Overlook Ventures, Matt from Rare Breed, um, Lola. Um, now she has, um, I think, like Gangsta VC, uh, Gail from like Vitalize. I mean, I was like studying every single one of them from what their thesis look like, like how did they do, right? As all minorities, right? Like either black or women. Um, that have been successfully be able to like launch their own VC. And the more I did, the more I said, okay, like the way I'm going to structure my phone is going to be a 506C versus a 506B. I'm getting a little bit technical. 506C really just means that you can publicly solicit, right? That you're fundraising um, from the general public, whether it being a press release, Twitter, LinkedIn, social media, newsletter, I can get on this podcast and say I'm fundraising, right? I can do the only, the only uh, 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 negative thing about that is the fact that all your investors have to be accredited and you have to verify that they're actually accredited. And then from a 506B, they still have to be accredited. You don't just have to verify, right? Like you, I could just show up and be like, oh, I'm accredited. And like the fund manager don't have to verify that information. So the more I looked, the more I researched. And I said, okay, like if that's the case, I'm going to launch, um, I'm going to go with a public bank. Like I'm going to launch and I'm going to like put it out there. And in early January, after doing a lot of my research and putting a lot of back-end work that I can't even talk about into this podcast, we eventually launched. And that was really the beginning of our fundraising. We made sure that in our press release, we made sure that it said, hey, if you're interested in diversifying your portfolio, that is investing in the African continent, please reach out to us. When you go on our website, literally the same, it's like, Hey, if you're interested in investing in Africa, invest with us. And I think many people don't realize it, but like, really, we got a lot and lots of inbound from like accredited investors, high net worth individuals, you know, family offices, funds of funds, just people saying, Hey, we saw, we saw your article or we saw some of your posts on social media and we'd love to invest. And that, amount of people where what really helped us do our first close and to be able to start fundraise investing. So that is a little bit of the story behind um, how we were capable of raising um, our, you know, our initial capital for Azure Capital. Mm -hmm. uh, that sounds incredible. Uh, now, <clears throat> moving on to your investment thesis, uh, mm -hmm. what's your investment thesis at uh, Azure Capital? Yeah, so our investment thesis is more a geographic focused thesis versus um, a sector specific thesis. Um, I like to say we are sector agnostic, but as of right now, we have about eight verticals that we are very interested in and that we focus on some of them being fintech, education, um, healthcare, um, marketplaces is a big one. I have a background, like both myself are marketplaces, so I'm really good. Um, at, at understanding how to like grow and scale a marketplace, both from a B2B and from a B2B to C standpoint. Um, so our sec our thesis is really revolves around um, as long as, you know, we're looking for B2B and B2B to C tech and tech enabled software companies out of sub-Saharan Africa. Um, we, we really look for asset lights. So we're focused on like software specific companies and one thing that gets a lot of people is, you know, we don't really invest in blockchain um, or Web3 or metaverse companies. 
Got it. Uh, now let's let's talk talk about the African startup ecosystem because uh, that is something that is not uh, talked about enough. And I believe mm-hmm. that is there is some great stuff happening in there in Africa. Some great founders coming up. So tell us about the ecosystem and why Africa is the place to invest. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm just bullish. I mean, first of all, right, I'm African. <laughs> right? I'm native, so like that's my dream. Um, it is my hope to change the face and the way people view Africa. I think entrepreneurship um, is one of the biggest, you know, like value add to any economy, right? The more entre- successful entrepreneurs are, the more, you know, they're creating jobs. And um, the more those, you know, like now we have an ecosystem with like millions and millions of people with really good jobs. Like what does that do? Right now, those people can have a better standard of living for their families. They can take their, their kids to really good school, right? They can afford a really good health care. And, you know, then you're like promoting prosperous, you know, like economy. And that's a little bit the way I view um, why VC and just like investing in some of the best technology companies across the continent help improve and impact the whole continent as a whole. Um, why Africa? I think um, there's a huge opportunity with Africa being the last frontier. I think we have seen over the last, I'll say 10 to 20 years, right, the evolution of the internet and then digitalization in the US, right? And some of the impact that that has done. I mean, when you think of some of the biggest companies, the biggest job creation companies, we're not thinking about the manufacturing guys, right? We're not thinking about the, the, the industrial revolution. Now, if you look, it's the Amazons, the Googles, the Facebooks, right? Um, Microsoft, those are the ones really creating a lot of jobs, right? That are well-paying jobs, six figures jobs in the U.S. Um, we've seen that evolution in the U.S. We've seen it in Europe, right? We've seen that in China. Very recently, we've seen that in Latam and India, and I think Africa is just getting started. And, you know, for anybody that has been able to see this evolution, right, over the last decades, you know, in several countries and continents, um, you all know it is just a matter of time before it hits um, the African continent. And for me, um, you know, like I'm willing to be part of the early believers um, eventually. Right, absolutely. And uh, as an investor, you always want to be early uh, in the markets that are coming up, right? And Africa is uh, certainly one of them, right? Uh, and yeah. uh, moving on, uh, like what are, what are some companies, some exciting investments that you've already made, some portfolio companies uh, doing exciting work uh, in Africa that you would like to mention on the podcast? Yeah, definitely. So I have made quite a few angel investments, but I will speak to you about some of my recent um, portfolio companies. I'll say one of them that I'm really excited is a prop tech company. It's called Split. Um, and I think it's one of those problems that you will not necessarily hear about it in the U.S., right? But when I think emerging market, especially Africa, I think, you know, they're bringing so much value and they're going to do amazing Really, um, when I think of it, I think in most African countries, not all, right? They, um, landlords require you to pay at least. In the crazy ones, they require at least one to three years of rent in advance, right? In the medium one, they require maybe like six to 12 months. And I'll say the average is maybe three to six months in advance. I know many countries, including my uh, country, Cameroon, um, that experienced this exact problem. And this company particularly split started as a property management company in the early days, so like four years ago, maybe four or five years ago. And then they've evolved by learning from their consumers, like their customers, like what are your problems? And they ended up realizing that one of the biggest challenge was being able to afford rent that you had to pay upfront. So now they offer a rent now buy data or rent now pay later, I think that's how you say it, uh, where they help you pay your rent up front and then you pay them on a monthly basis with a little bit of, you know, added fees on top of it, which for me, I thought that was super innovative. It is, you know, it is a problem. Like we all know many Africans can afford that. The the other one is um, a fintech company. This is the problem that I've had for me personally. It's called Renes, the payroll slash fintech 
um, tech startup. And really, one of the challenges that I mentioned earlier was when we employed a lot of our employees from the continent, our biggest challenge was finding a good payroll, pro, you know, like technology where we could make sure that we have the right contracts, right, compliance, legal for each African country, but also that making it easy for them to be able to get their payment on time in their local currency. And I think that's one thing that we take for granted, right? Like most Africans can receive money in USD, right? So they have to receive it in their local currency in a way that makes sense for them. Um, this company makes it super easy. I mean, when I, when I met with the founders, I saw the drive, what they had been able to accomplish with very limited resources. They had barely raised any money. Um, they had a functioning product. They had good customers. Um, they made me really excited. I mean, I could go on and on about all my portfolio companies, but I'll leave you with those two. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Uh, I'll make sure to put the links to those two companies in the blog post that will go along with this episode okay. so that people can check them out. Uh, yep. And uh, what, what are the, like you mentioned, a fintech company and a prop tech company. So mm -hmm. uh, what are the most uh, hottest uh, sectors uh, in Africa uh, right now? I mean, I would say fintech is the biggest one. I mean, everybody knows this, right? Like, yeah. um, and there's a reason why fintech is that way. It's just um, fintech is like financial services and financial technologies are like the infrastructure of um, any ecosystem. It does not matter if I'm building an agri healthcare, you know, if I can't process payment, if we can't transact online, um, it makes it very difficult to do anything. And obviously, after the transaction online comes different layers, right? Like now I've seen like lending is another big one. Um, I think marketplaces will be my next, right? And marketplaces will go with like so many, with so many layers. I mean, it could be marketplace in logistic. I have, a, I have another portfolio companies where what they're doing is they're bridging like that, that, that cutting a lot of fragmented things that have been done on paper by hand, um, that have multiple layers get, get breakthrough. And then they are building a platform to be able to like make it easy for the supply and the demand to meet each other. Um, but yeah, that, those would be like my, my immediate thought. Right. And like talking about your investments through a GM capital. So what, what are the things that you're looking for in a company uh, while making the investment decision? What trades do you look for in a founder and what metrics do you look for in the company? Yeah. So um, trades in the founder slash company, we have something at Ajim and my team knows this, what we like to call the five T. Um, the first T is the team, right? Um, when building a company, I think that's like, especially early stage, when when nobody knows you, right? You're just getting started. Maybe you've built something. Um, you have to be able to, to know that that team, right, is a strong team. Either they have prior industry knowledge in the market that they are serving or they have prior entrepreneurial um, knowledge, right? Um, how good does the team work together? Whether you're solo, like we, we don't require you to be like a co like have a co-founder. You can be a solo, but like what experience do you have um, in the market that you're serving? Um, and are you a good leader, right? Like, are you capable of, and I think it, it goes into my next one, which is temperament, right? Are you a leader that can attract investors, that can attract customers, that can attract the best, team players um do you do you you know like do you have a great vision and mission and 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 really values for for your company and what you want to accomplish when we look at those two now the next thing is like timing is is the is this the right time for the product right is the market ready for it i think a lot of african founders or just like a lot of africans in general or even other emerging markets right we see something uh, um happen in the u.s or in europe or even in China or, or, or anywhere else in the world, and we're like, oh my gosh, that looks pretty cool, right? I think we, we have, I can, I can build something similar in Africa and make a lot of money. But unfortunately, the African market is not ready for it, right? There are just too many breaking layers that will not allow you to be successful at this time. Not that it's a bad business. It's probably a good business, but it's just the right timing. And then the next one is traction, right? 
um, how much revenue have you had? Like, have is this just an idea? Is this uh, something that you've actually like brought in customers? You have M- a good MRI, you have a good ARR. Like, what are we talking about? Um, as for us, we like to say at least five to ten thousand in MRR um, for us to get excited about the opportunity. We have looked at opportunities that are less than that, but that's at least our starting point. Um, did I mention five things or did I mention just four? Team, temperament, timing, traction. What is the fifth one? My brain, I can't think about it, but <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, no we worries. have five of them. <laughs> For sure, I'll look it up and add it in the blog post, right? Yeah. And that, that's an uh, that's an amazing uh, framework that you have in place. Uh, uh, the five T's uh, for any qualifying investment. Great. Uh, and my last main question for you would be uh, before we move on to the rapid fire round is that uh, what change do you wish to see in uh, the global startup or VC ecosystem in general uh, to be more uh, accepting and inclusive of people of color, underrepresented founders uh, and women founders? Uh, what change there needs to be? Yeah, and before I, meant, I answer your first question, I just remember the last T, which is technology, is your product. <laughs> um, but yeah, Got like what change, what change do I want to see for underrepresented um, founders and funders? Was that your question? Yeah. I mean, I think... Um, it is exhausting <laughs> having to talk about this again and again and again and again. But we are seeing, we're definitely seeing some change. But again, like we all know the statistics, right? Like, you know, less than 2% of funding goes to like, you know, minorities. Um, and I think something like less than 0. Point something percent goes to like black women. And this is just in the U.S., right? If I even have to bring to the African context, it's even worse. Um I think at this point, right, it's, it's more from the sense of we can keep trying to like have a seat at the table, right? We need to get to a stage where we are all saying we are going to make our own tables and we are going to create them. Um, and that's what I'm seeing quite a lot of people do nowadays. It's like, yes, we can keep talking about oh, we need to see more funding goes to Africans, underrepresented founders, but also we, minorities, right? Like, I live in the U.S., but I could categorize myself as many things, right? I could say I'm an immigrant, I'm a woman, and I'm black, and, you know, I have an accent, and I have all these different things that are against me. But every single time, I always tell myself that, um, if I have to look at the negativity um, that is brought onto us, I'll never do anything because I'll be like, why even try? I, can, I probably wouldn't be able to raise money. But if I said, oh, Africans can get funding, how about I make that change? I will go out and I'll raise money and I'll invest in these African founders. And I, and I honestly think we're seeing more and more of that, right? We're seeing more women and more minorities, you know, either like launch their companies or like launch their own funds and deciding that they will only invest, right, in a particular underrepresented community um, that have been underserved for the last decades and, and, and a lot of years to come. And, and yeah, like even though we are doing that, um, it's unfortunate because the people who still own the money, right, so like, for me, it's like, yes, we've climbed the, the base ladder of like, okay, we are not founders anymore. We are now fund managers. The next thing that we want to be able to climb is like, okay, now we're also LPs, right? Because at the end of the day, that's the third layer that a lot of people don't really realize until like you sit in my seat and you're like, oh, that's where the money is actually coming from. So like we need to figure out how to bring more minority minorities and women to the LPs. Um, and there's a lot of education that has to be put in that. Because I truly believe that a lot of very wealthy um, Africans and minorities and women um, that are not just educated about this particular industry. Um, and if they knew, right, that a private market, especially venture capital, is one of the most profitable asset class that is out there, right? a lot of people will pay attention to the VC industry. So 
that's the hope that I want to see. I actually think that I want to see more and more uh, minorities and women on that third layer versus the second one. Absolutely. And I love that take so much, right? If you're not going to give us a seat on the table, right? We are going to build, build our own table, right? And get our own yeah. chair, right? Amazing. Mind-blowing stuff. Uh, amazing stuff you're doing. And th- this this revolutionary, to say the least, right? And you're sh- showing a lot of women, people of color, underrepresented founders, uh, the pathway that you're not complaining about it. I, I didn't see you complaining in that answer at all. You were saying, okay, uh, I'm, I'm just uh, building up the answer to that myself, right? I'm not asking mm-hmm. others to change it. I, I'm being the change, right? Brilliant stuff. All right, let's 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 move on to the rapid fire round uh, to keep on the heat, right? So I have five quick questions for you. Uh, okay. uh, if, if you're ready, we can give it a go. I'm ready. All right. The first one is industry sectors and regions you invest in. The, like the best three sectors and, and wait, can you repeat the yeah. question? Yeah. So uh, industry sectors uh, and regions you invest in. Industry sectors and region. I'll just say sectors and region. Um, sure, 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 sure. Mm. I'll say top three. I'll say fintech, marketplaces, SaaS, B2B SaaS. Um, right. And like my top region will be Nigeria, Ghana, Kenya. But I really want to add Cote d'Ivoire, Senegal, Cameroon as like my top three from my Francophone African countries. Right, great. Uh, what stage you typically invest in? Pre-seed and seed, very early. Mostly like 80%, 70 to 80% pre-seed, about 20 to 30 seed. Great. Um, what's the typical check size? Um, I'll say between 100 to 250 is where I want to be. As of right now, it's more around 50K. Got it. Uh, dollars, right? You're talking in terms of dollars. Yes. Got it. Yeah. Uh, and where can founders pitch you? Um, if you go on our website, it, is, it literally says pitch us. <laughs> and that's the best way to get in touch with my team. Not in my DMs, not on my social media. Um, I don't respond to those. The best way to pitch us is by sending an application directly on our website at agimcapital.com. Um, and you find a place that says pitch us. Yeah. And uh, where can our listeners follow you? Yeah, so on literally every social media platform you can think of out there is at Eunice Ajim. um, And on my LinkedIn is Eunice Ajim. Right. I'll make sure to put all those links in the show notes below and in the blog post. And that'll go out uh, with uh, the episode. It was so great to have you on. I love what you're working on. And we need more of this energy in the VC space. And I hope you climb that last ladder as soon as possible as well, right? Uh, Thank you for coming on. Happy investing. Thank you so much, Prashan. It was so great, you know, being on the podcast. Really appreciate it. My pleasure.